Several Minnesotans have written me asking about the Horner Jobs proposal, and it's understandable when more than 200,000 Minnesotans still are without work, and tens or even hundreds of thousands more Minnesotans are working two or three jobs or are underemployed, trying to make ends meet. So here's the Horner plan. First, we need to invest in our small businesses, the companies that really are driving the, the new job growth. One of the things I've proposed is to exempt our small manufacturing plants from the sales tax and the purchase of capital equipment. Let them buy the new technology that's going to help them create new jobs in the manufacturing sector in communities around the state. Secondly, we need to make sure that we're investing in education, that we have lifelong learning so that people have the opportunity to go back to school to learn the new skills that will help them compete in today's economy. As I've traveled around the state, I've talked to a lot of our vocational schools, our two-year community colleges. There are good jobs in Minnesota for people who have the skills, have the training. Now we need to make it accessible to all Minnesotans. Thirdly, we need to make sure that we're in, we are investing in research at our two and four year schools so that we, we are a leader in creating the new ideas, the new technologies that then we can bring to market in Minnesota businesses creating Minnesota jobs. Fourth, we need to be investing in our infrastructure, in the roads, the bridges that are important to our future and can create some immediate construction jobs. We have a lot of shovel-ready projects that are ready to go. Let's invest in them, put Minnesota to work, but also make sure that we're able to move products to market, move people to new jobs, that we have the infrastructure that a healthy state needs. And lastly, Minnesota needs to be a state that is open to new businesses moving to our state and can help businesses already here create the jobs that, that are ready to go to help them compete in national and global markets. One of the things that we need to do in Minnesota is streamline our permitting and regulatory processes. Too often we just set up too many barriers for businesses that are ready to expand in Minnesota, ready to create the kinds of jobs that we need. As governor, my commitment to businesses is that without any extraordinary circumstances, if a business applies for a permit, we're going to get them an answer in no more than six months. Not the 12 months, the 18 months, or even longer that it now takes. Six months, they'll have an answer so we can get those jobs online, we can allow Minnesota businesses to expand, we can grow our state. If we do all of these things, Minnesota can tap into the talent of, of our people, we can tap into the innovation of our businesses, we can create the jobs that Minnesota needs now and well into the future. Maggie Murphy of Oakdale is one of many who have written in asking about health care, and it is a critical issue. We see more and more Minnesotans pushing up against bankruptcy, other financial crises because of the cost of health care. So here are a couple of things we need to do to make sure Minnesota's health care is providing access to low-cost, high-quality health care for all Minnesotans. First, we need to take the uh, early opt-in on Medicaid. That's the federal program that helps provide health care for low-income Minnesotans. That's an important step to cover more uh, Minnesotans and to provide us the basis for true health care reform. Secondly, we need to change everyone's expectations of the health care system. First of all, we need to make sure that we're investing in prevention, that we're holding people accountable for their own health care. We need to hold people accountable for their own behavior, for their own health care. We need to make sure that people have the education, the tools, the incentives to stop smoking, to eat uh, better, to, to improve their nutrition, and to exercise to, to take care of themselves. A huge share of the cost of health care is simply due to, to personal habits. We need to change that. We also need to make sure that we're coordinating the care for those people with chronic conditions. About 5% of all Minnesotans consume about 50% of health care costs. There are some terrific innovative programs that are helping Minnesotans deal with these chronic conditions, improving the quality of their lives while we reduce the cost. That's going to take an investment in technology, an investment in helping to make sure that we're keeping track of people with chronic conditions so that we can spot the warning signs before they end up in, in a hospital and very expensive care. We also need to make sure that we continue the path Minnesota has led and, and is an innovator on 
to start paying for quality care, to start paying for outcomes, not just the number of procedures that doctors and other healthcare providers offer to their, their patients. And lastly, we need to make sure that we're investing in new technologies, including personal health records, so people can take control of their own health records. They can track where they're at. They can become better partners with their health care providers in controlling the cost of health care. But one of the other components that candidates don't often talk about, but we need to tackle right now, is older adult care. We're a state that is growing older. We spend about a billion dollars every budget cycle on care for older Minnesotans. That's an important part of our health care system. Right now, we end up with a lot of people in nursing homes or other institutions. And while we're fortunate to have a lot of good nursing homes in Minnesota, it also is a very expensive uh, form of care for older Minnesotans. We need to invest in more creative solutions, community-based solutions that can help seniors stay in their own homes. We need to create incentives so that people are buying health, long-term care health insurance right now when they're younger, when they can build up the, the resources to help pay for that uh, care when they're, they're older. To create personal savings accounts that are going to help Minnesotans take care of their needs in uh, their old age. All of these things that are important if we make the investments in innovation, in a commitment to providing health care coverage for Minnesotans, and in a commitment that says we're all in this together, we have to take personal responsibility, and we need to make sure that our partners are, are doing their share. So things like making sure that, that insurers are paying for prevention, making sure that Minnesota is leading the transition in not excluding people for pre-existing conditions, that we have a health care system, a health insurance system that provides people with the coverage they need at a cost they can afford. I received an email from Ashley Gray and he asks about the investment Minnesota needs to make in creating a strong infrastructure of health programs and in particular in making sure that our communities are healthy, that the public has an investment in, in health. That's a priority of mine. I think Minnesota needs to make an investment in prevention, needs to make an investment in good public health. So a couple of programs that I'm proposing, even in a very tight budget, I believe that we need to, to, to make an investment upfront to reduce long-term costs. And so a couple of areas. I believe Minnesota needs to invest in the state health improvement program going forward. This is a program that works with communities around the state to help them create grassroots program, locally designed and executed programs to improve the health of their community's population. Secondly, I think we need to make sure that we have a commitment to good public policy. So I've proposed raising the, the price of tobacco. I understand that nobody likes a new tax, but here's the fact. Tobacco costs Minnesota $2 billion a year in excess medical costs. And the most effective deterrent to stop young people from smoking and to encourage adults to quit smoking is higher tobacco prices. There is no good public policy that supports cheap cigarettes. Thirdly, we need to make an investment in education, in helping Minnesotans understand what they need to do to live healthier lives. So it's things like making sure they have the facts around nutrition. They understand the value of exercise and physical activity. These are the important activities that help Minnesotans live healthier lives. The last thing we need to do is to make sure that our public health agencies and our state departments, the Department of Health, the Department of Human Services, have the resources they need to do the job that they do so well. We need to be a state that is holding all of our partners accountable. Providers, our health care agencies, and insurers that we're investing in prevention, we're investing in expanding access to health care through early buy-in of the, the Medicaid option, those kinds of programs that hold everyone accountable, starting with each one of us. That's the only way we're going to create in Minnesota a nation-leading health care system that promotes low-cost, high-quality health care for all Minnesotans.